your life. And you're on. Say hi. 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 Uh, we're gonna, <laughs> we're wait. gonna wait for um, more people to join before we get started. So yeah. Yeah, just give us a second and we will be right with you. Mm -hmm. Hello. More people to join and then we will get started so just give us a kind second. of get situated hello thank you for joining mm -hmm. um, so yeah <laughs> we're just gonna give it a couple minutes uh -huh. I'm sorry for the awkward kind of wait uh -huh. um, but yeah you can kind of get your area situated make mm -hmm. sure that you have um, some of the basic things and then We'll start the tutorial. Yeah, make sure you have your parrot and your carton and your dowels, your zip ties, your glue gun, your um, your dull pencil, scissors, and decorations just set up. Mm -hmm. Yes, and definitely make sure that you have your parrot with you. Um, so yes. And we will be getting started shortly. Mm -hmm. Just waiting for a couple more people to get on and then we will begin. Do you guys want to hear bird jokes? These are such bad jokes that they're good, honestly. Mm -hmm. so, they make you laugh because they're so cringy. <laughs> okay. Okay, so why do seagulls fly over the sea? Um, because if they flew over the bay, they would be called bagels. Haha, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> what do you give a sick bird? You give a treat mint. Get it, treat? How do chickens get strong? Um... I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Exercise! Why didn't the rooster cross the road? Because he wasn't a chicken. Why did the little bird get in trouble at school? Um, because he was caught tweeting in a text. Alright guys, we have a good amount of people, so we're going to go ahead and begin the live. Hopefully some more people join, but for now, we're going to go ahead and get started. So my name is Nima Heider, and I am a junior at Shadow Creek High School, and I'm a part of Youth Environmental Council at KPB. And my name is Bella Novogratic, and I am a junior at Glenda Dawson High School. A fun fact about me is I have a twin sister who's sitting behind the camera. And I have two puppies. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. So all of this is brought to you and sponsored by Keep Perlin Beautiful. Keep Perlin Beautiful is a nonprofit 501 c environmental organization to empower Perlin citizens to take responsibility of their environment. And the specific organization that we are under is Youth Environmental Council, which is a student-led organization under KPB that prioritizes beautifying the environment and teaching and making a change in our community. It's also completely brought about to you by like high school students who are from Perlin ISD, Alvin ISD, and schools in that area. I'm from Alvin ISD at Shadow Creek High School, and she's from Perlin ISD from Dawson mm -hmm. High School. We also have Perlin ISD, I mean, Perlin High School kids behind the camera. All right, so. Okay, so today we are going to be making bird feeders. So some of the materials you are going to need is a milk carton or a milk jug or even a juice carton works. Um, you're going to need a wooden dowel or some chopsticks so your bird can perch onto your feeder. You are also going to need a zip tie or string to hang your bird feeder up. A glue gun. This will require um, parental assistance, so make sure you have your parent with you. Um, a craft knife, exacto knife, or dual pencil. Also make sure you have your parent with you when using these scissors. And then paint, tape, or really anything you can find around your house for decorating your bird feeder. So there will be steps posted as we go along. We will be saying the steps, but in case you get behind or you want to go ahead, there will be steps, um, they will be linked in the comments. So go ahead and go look for that. It's a Google Doc, so you should be able to open it with ease. If you have any issues, please, please put comments into the comment box and we will get, like, we'll answer it as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. All right, so what you guys have been waiting for, let's get started with making our birdhouses. Yes. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to draw lines a few inches from the bottom of the carton. So this is gonna be your reference for where to cut the box. So then we're gonna poke small, hol small holes in the carton.
carton with a pencil to help you cut. So go ahead and poke them right here and that will give your scissor an opening to get in and cut. So these are just gonna be help you to cut it easier. So I'm gonna give you all a second to go ahead and do that. <laughs> Once again, just draw a line so you can put it in or so you can have an area to cut and then just poke holes so you can cut that area out. It's supposed to be sort of a square shape and a couple inches from the bottom. While we're, while we're doing that, we actually have some interesting bird facts for all y'all do that. If anybody needs the steps repeated, please let us know. Just comment and we will go over them again. Yeah. I'll just go over it one more time in case anyone is didn't hear me the first time. I went kind of fast. Mm -hmm. um, just border line with the marker so you know exactly where to cut. Take your scissors and go ahead and cut it out. If you are having a, a hard time getting your scissor in, Poke a hole so you can put your scissor in and start cutting. Make sure you cut in small pieces because it's hard to cut it in a whole um, circle or square in one go around. You can also use an X-Acto knife if you want yes. to be a bit more precise. But, but that's just make sure you have your parent with you when using an X-Acto knife because they are sharp. Yeah. And if any of you guys are now joining us, we have the steps as well as the materials needed pinned in the comments so you guys can reference reference that it's a google doc so you should be able to open it at any time i'd also like to add that this step should be done on both sides so while i'm only showing you one side you should be doing it on both sides once again for those of you who just joined get a marker outline the uh, square or circle cut it out using a dull pencil to kind of poke a hole and get your scissor in yes all right does anyone need any more time could you guys check the chat and let me know if anyone has anything? Okay. Oh, okay. So slow down. We have, so we're going to slow down a little bit. Um, sorry. Sorry about that. We can go over the steps again. Would you like us to repeat step one? Just say yes in the comments if you need us to. Okay. Okay, so we're going to just go over the first step again. Um, so we just want to take a marker and we're gonna basically outline where we wanna cut. And we wanna cut a square or a circle a few inches down. So then once you've outlined with a marker, you can go ahead and take a pencil and poke it. Once you've poked it, you can put the scissor in and you start cutting. You wanna cut with small pieces and not too big pieces because it is hard to cut it in one go around. So you mm -hmm. just cut it with a couple small pieces and off until you get it nice and straight. Also, if you have a craft knife or an X-Acto knife, you can use that other uh, rather than scissors. It might be a little bit easier. However, it is more dangerous, so make sure you have your parent with you. And one last thing, you want to make sure that the um, hole you cut is large enough for a bird to fit inside, so you don't want to make it super small. Okay, so I think we're going to move on to the next step. Yeah. So our next step is to use... Oh yeah, sorry. Our next step, my bad. Our next step is to use a dull pencil to poke about two holes on the side of the carton. Now these holes are air holes, so the bird can breathe easily when they are eating food and just perching on your bird feeder. So the holes should be relatively high. Now they should be about here and here. So in our little model bird feeder, we have our holes poked out for you just to see. And the holes are right here and here, and we wanna do this on all sides of the bird feeder. So here and here, here and here. So go ahead and just take a pencil and poke it through. Make sure you're not going too hard because the pencil can slip and hurt you. So just go softly, kind of poke through. And yeah, that one's a pretty easy step. If anybody needs that repeated, please say so in the comments. Or if you need any more time, please say so in the comments and we will yes. put a pause on it. <laughs> Everybody good? Okay, so. We'll just give it, I think, a couple more seconds. Okay, we'll give you guys a little bit more yeah. time. Do a bird fact in between. Oh, yes. Oh, you guys want to hear some bird facts? So, each species of bird carries defense mechanisms like resistances and the ability to fight disease. But many species are losing their ability to fight particular diseases, which means more birds are becoming extinct. Which is why we're trying to help protect as many birds as we can and make as much awareness about these birds and the issues that, that are happening to them as much as possible. Which is exactly what Keep Pearland Beautiful stands for, making sure that we are informing every uh, people in our community about how our environment is being affected. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're doing the steps. Show the steps. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so for those of y'all who just joined or who are just
just a little bit behind, we just took out um, a, a square or a circle area for the birds to sit. We did that on both sides and it should just be a few inches from the bottom. Then we poked holes in the top right here on all sides, two holes to help the birds get air when they're eating from your bird feeder. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we'll be moving on to the next step. So the next step is to poke about four holes in the bottom of the carton. So this will allow the carton to drain if any water gets in, say if it rains or something. It's very important to have these, but not too many because the food will fall out if you have too many. Yes. So, so don't open sure. the whole thing up. Yes, make sure you keep them small and you don't put too many in. As you can see, I don't know if you guys can see actually, but we have pretty small holes in the bottom of ours. Mm -hmm. They're very tiny, just the tip of a pencil, just poke it through a little bit. You can also use a pen, but a pen might be a bit sharp and could hurt you. Yeah. So go ahead and poke those through and we will give it a couple of seconds and we'll move on to the next step. Yes. If we are moving too fast, again, please let us know. Mm -hmm. And also remember, we have the steps and the materials linked in the comments. So if you ever need to reference that, you can always do so. Okay, all right. Um, if anybody needs to see it closer, we can go ahead and bring it up closer. Go ahead and show them what steps. So Sama here, one of the kids behind the camera, is showing you guys how the bird feeder looks up close. So up close to the front, you can see that there is a square. It's pretty big so birds can get inside. And that square is nicely cut so the birds won't get hurt while trying to get their food. If you look at the bottom, there are two holes two very tiny holes to help drain water in case water gets into the bird feeder. Those should be poked with a pencil. So those are our first two steps. All right. And we also have holes at the top, of course, and those are to help bring air into our bird feeder. Yes. Okay, so the next step is to mark out a slot near the bottom of the cart and, and cut. So it should be right here below your actual first the first square that we cut, the first circle that we cut, it should be a little bit below. Mm -hmm. So not at the bottom, but like a little bit above. So you're going to mark it out with a marker like we did earlier. And once again, you're going to cut through that. This will help aerate whatever food or seed that you put in. And it will also serve as emergency drainage in case there's too much water in these holes. We'll be able to handle it. So would you like to show them again? And I will repeat the step as she brings it close. So once again, cut a tiny rectangle towards the bottom with the marker, outline it, and then go ahead and cut through it. Once you cut through it, this will serve as drainage and will also serve to aerate the food. Thank you. Okay, so now moving on to the next step. The next step is going to be to take your wooden dowel. This is kind of what it should look like. You can also use a chopstick or honestly, you could probably use a pencil. Okay. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. The next step is a few inches from the bottom. Um, you will make a hole with the pencil and um, these holes should be um, a, good dis um, a good distance from the, um, the same distance from the bottom. Um, so, yes. Okay, so, so sorry, we kind of got... It's on here. Step. All right, so for example, the holes on this one, it's right here and here. That's where we chose to put it on this example. Now you could put it lower based on where you're, um, how you're setting up your bird feeder, for example, because ours is right here. We went ahead and put another one right here. So depending on how your bird feeder is set up, that's where you're going to put your wooden dowels and your holes. Right now we're just making the holes to put the wooden dowel in. Mm -hmm. So for this one, we have our hole here. Make sure where you're, wherever you're putting the hole, you're putting it on the other side of the bird feeder in the exact same way. What is the question that we have? You're asking, would it be different for a milk jug? Oh, okay, you can show our um, milk jug. Yes, so here we have a milk jug, and basically for this one, you would poke holes right under where you are um, cutting your bigger holes so the bird can perch on top to eat it. Yeah, so go ahead and poke those holes. Depending on what you're using, you might have to have a different size hole. Make sure it's not too big because you want it to be like a snug fit, even though you can use hot glue to kind of make sure the dowel is in. But once again, I'm getting ahead of myself with the steps right now. We're just making the holes. We'll do so, Alright, so another bird fact is... So another bird fact is that we are losing birds 
because of hu because humans have taken away their homes and their food. Scientists are taking efforts of um, um, are tracking the effects of habitat loss by studying birds. This is why it is important to build things like bird feeders to make sure that birds keep coming and have access to food and also have access um, have a place to live. Alright, so um, are you guys about done with that stuff? It's just poking holes. We haven't started putting anything in yet. So as long as you've done the holes, you are on track of it. Okay. Alright, okay. So now our next step is to take your wooden dowel, like I showed before, um, or your chopstick, and to just play, um, put it in those um, holes. So this is a very simple step. You're just sliding it through. Um, so yeah, this is what it For should example, look like For example, if we were to just take this one out, we just have to put it through our holes. Mm -hmm. Let me find the other side really quickly. Uh-oh. This might be a little difficult. But yeah, just put it through like that mm -hmm. and just slide it through. Yes. And if you want to secure it, you can take a little bit of glue and put it on the outside so it doesn't fall out. What's the question we have? They're asking, will the bird, bird fit inside? Will the bird sit inside? Um, it depends on the bird. If it's a really tiny bird, it could possibly go inside, especially if it can't reach the food. It might go inside and go look for food. However, if it's, if it's a bigger bird, it might just sit on the outside and put its head through the hole to grab some food. Yes, and we will be getting to this step in a little bit. Okay, are we all good? And also for the wooden uh, dowel, you can use a wooden dowel how we did it. We could also use chopsticks. We can use like little kebab sticks if you mm -hmm. want. Just make sure you cut off the like the super sharp tip at the front. And just in case so a bird doesn't get hurt, you can cut those off. You can put them in. I would recommend if you use more than one, if you want to make it more stable, you glue them together because yes. that way you kind of have a stronger post. And here's an example of that. So here I took a kebab stick and I glued them together to make it stronger. Um, so yes, you can definitely do that. But once again, make sure that you are gluing with caution and that you have a parent nearby. I see we have a question. Can you tell us what that is? On the milk jug, how many large holes? Um, so on the milk jug, it really depends. Um, if you, you can put one bird, um, you can put one hole or you can put two. I put two on mine so that way more birds could come and um, eat, but it really just depends. As you can see, she put the holes on this side and this side, but you can also do it on the two opposite sides, so here yes. and here, but it really depends on how you want to do it. Mm -hmm. It is slightly more difficult to do it on this side and this side. If you're doing it on opposite sides, then you can just slide it through, yes. but it really depends on how creative and how different you want to make your bird feeder. Mm -hmm. Both ways work. And once again, these are just references. These aren't exactly how you have to do it, so feel free to get creative. Yes. Um, so the next step? Yes, so the next step is to, um, is to, sorry, is to put the wooden, um, is to use a hot glue gun to secure your dowels to the carton. I already talked about this before. This is just so it doesn't slide around. Um, and then you can um, attach a short one inch wooden dowel at the front of, um, at the bottom of where your hole is cut, like so, just so that way if it's a bigger bird or a bird that doesn't want to necessarily go inside the bird feeder, they can sit outside but still eat. Make sure you're using parental assistance, especially if you are a younger kid. This is really important because hot glue guns can get really hot. Yes. And as you, it's called a hot glue gun. But yeah, just make sure you're being careful. If you do get touched by the hot glue yes. gun, you can burn your fingers. So be careful, please. Okay. So we'll give it a few more seconds until everybody's completed that step. I'll go ahead and give you guys a cool fun fact while we're waiting. Just because birds are going extinct, we can still, as a community, save the species of birds or different species of birds. The Houston Zoo is already raising Micronesian kingfisher birds, which are now extinct in the wild. In a breeding program, they're using they're saving them from total extinction as well as helping many other birds. Now, total extinction is a very, very scary thing, and it's a very, very uh, possible fear for many bird species out there. So we're trying to save uh, different organizations, not specifically us, but different organizations are trying to save these species. And honestly, we just have to make sure that we are watching out for the birds, making sure that we are knowledgeable about them, and just yeah. making sure that we're teaching everybody that it is important to look out for these birds, it is important to save their habitats. Because building cities and things, that's taking away their habitats. So we just need to make sure 
We're giving them a good place to live, good food, as much as we can help them. Yes. Okay, is everybody completed with that step? Okay. Is anybody completed our that, that step or does anybody need some clarification? Or any questions at all. If you need us to go back to an earlier step, if you just come or go over all the steps that we've just done, please yes. let us know. Okay, so it seems like we're all good. So the next step you're going to do is you are going to cut a hole at the topmost part of your bird feeder. So you can run a zip tie, a string, or even a hook at the top. And this is so, of course, you can hang your bird feeder up. Yep. Um, just make the hole relatively small. It doesn't yes. have to be anything fancy and just for a string or whatever to go mm -hmm. through. You can yes. go ahead and show that one. If you're using a milk jug, what you can do is you can poke a hole through the milk jug's cap mm -hmm. and then you can go ahead and slide your string through if we can go ahead and get that showed. So as you can see, she just poked um, two holes through the top and pushed a string through them. That one might be a little bit more difficult, but with a little bit of help from your parent, you might be able to do that one. Yes. An easier one is if you were just to take a hole and put a string through it. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and give you guys a sec to do that. I've already said most of my bird jokes, but let me see yes. if I have any left. <laughs> what do you call a sad bird? A blue bird. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. What robs you while you're in a bathtub? A robber ducky. <laughs> okay, guys, so now... Um, just so that way we ha we know that everybody is kind of on the same page and everybody knows what's going on. We're going to run through the steps again, um, just to make sure even if we've had, um, if we have some new people joining us too, they kind of know what to do. About how many people do we have on there right now? Okay. Okay. So, so. we're going to, we're going to go through the steps of it. If one of you guys could go ahead and go ahead and show it. I can mm -hmm. run through while it's closer up to it. Yes, All for right. anybody who has just joined, we are about to go over our steps again, so that way you guys kind of know what's going on. All right, if you could show the front of the box. So with the front of the box, we have a square, pretty big square, and that's what we just cut out, and we outlined it with a marker and went ahead and cut it out. And once we did that, we basically poked some holes through the entire carton, and it would be at the top of the carton, and that's to make sure that the birds have air. We did that at the very top because it's going to help our birds be able to breathe while they're getting food. Then at the bottom of the carton, right at the um, complete bottom of the carton. Oh, oh can you just sorry. grab this one? Sorry. At the complete bottom of the carton, we had um, some holes also. And that's once again to aerate the food and to make sure um, in case there's any water in the bird feeder, it comes out, so go ahead and poke those holes and make the rectangular square at the or rectangular line at the bottom to go ahead and get any water out. Mm -hmm. Then we just made holes in the sides, and that was for our wooden dowel yes. to go through. And this is so the birds have a place to perch whenever they're eating their food, mm -hmm. or just to even rest. And then the last thing that we did is we poked a hole through the top, and we put a string through it. If anybody needs us to repeat any of our instructions, then please let us know. All right, so, okay guys, so now your structure is complete and it's time to decorate. Decorating is the most fun and feel free to get creative and use whatever you have around your house. Some things you can use are paint. Acrylic paint is actually safe for birds. Um, you can even use glitter. Just make sure that whenever you use glitter, you either mix it with your paint or you put something on top of it so the birds don't eat it. Um, try and stay away from 3D stuff because the birds might think that it's food and they will try and eat it. Um, so yes, and also you can use decorative tape. This is definitely recommended. Um, so yeah, but just keep in mind too that these are going to be hanging outside. So whatever, however you decorate your bird feeder, feeder, you want to make sure that it will do fine if it gets wet. Um, if you use construction paper, put clear tape on top. And if you're doing um, paint, you can put Mod Podge on top. We have Mod Podge right here to kind of show you. This is really great. It's a water sealant, and it also makes sure um, it also ensures that the birds won't eat anything that they're not supposed to. 
um, on the outside exterior of your bird feeder. As you can see on this one, I painted popsicle sticks and put them on the top. Um, and then I also just painted like flowers and polka dots just to make it super fun. Just make sure whatever you do, it is relatively waterproof because these things will be out in the rain. And especially in Houston where we have some interesting weather, we want to make sure our bird feeders are actually surviving so that birds can actually eat from them. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and give you all some time to decorate. Once again, the decorations don't have to be done during the live. The decorations can be done later. Um, obviously, take as much time as you want. Mm -hmm. And this is also the perfect time to ask questions. If you need us to go over a step again, then please feel free to ask. How many people do we have currently? All right, thank you to the four people who are here. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. Yes. We are so happy that um, we are still able to do these um, interactions um, with you guys, even though they are virtual. Um, so yeah. We've definitely had to ad adapt our way of like doing yes. things in Youth Environmental Council. Normally we'd be out there actually with the kids, yes. helping them build these things in schools. But right recently, because of COVID, we're wearing masks clearly. Mm -hmm. We want to protect ourselves and protect the children and make sure we're not like passing COVID to anyone or giving any or getting COVID from anyone. Yes. So we're trying to do as much as we can from home or not from home, from um, a safe location and still giving you guys information and awareness about important things that are environmentally needed to talk about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so, um, so while we're decorating, we actually have some fun facts about Houston area birds. So, oh yeah, yes. Yeah. So the Houston area birds are right behind us, some of the ones behind here. Cameron, do you wanna go ahead and come out here for our Houston fun facts? Cameron is another student who's been helping us. He is an Alvin ISD kid. He goes to Shadow Creek High School. Mm -hmm. Hello. All right. Hello. My name is Cameron Stump. I go to Shadow Creek High School and I play for the tennis team at Shadow Creek. Mm -hmm. And here we have a Houstonian bird. This is the blue jay. And did you know that blue jays aren't actually blue? The, the barbs on their feathers refract light so that they appear to be blue. Mm -hmm. They like seeds, nuts, and berries. So if you want to attract blue jays to your bird feeder, be sure to put those in your feeder. So another Houston area bird is the northern mockingbird, which can be seen right over there. So the male northern mockingbird can actually learn 200 songs in its lifetime. Northern mockingbirds like to eat berries, insects, and small lizards. Mm -hmm. Okay. And over here we have the American robin. Now both the male and female American robins feed and protect their children. And American robins like to eat fruit. So if you really want to see some of these American robins in your bird feeder, make sure to put fruit in your bird feeder. Mm -hmm. The next bird that we have is the nor um, Northern Cardinal. Um, these are typically the birds that will crash into windows because they like to fight um, their reflection. Um, so yes, and if you want to attract these birds, they really like berries, seeds, insects and they also really like bird baths so if you have a bird bath then maybe hang your birds um, feeder near there and here we have the beautiful white winged dove now these guys are brown and white and they have a blue ring around their eyes and they're supposed to live in these brush habitats but they've had to adapt to the houstonian urban environments and suburban environments and they really like grain fruits and seeds so if you want some pretty white winged doves, put some green fruit and seeds in your bird feeder. So our next bird is the Cooper's Hawk, which is right here. Now the Cooper's Hawk is a bird that often fractures its bones while it's looking for food. And the Cooper Hawk likes to eat smaller birds and smaller mammals, so you might not want to attract this bird. Yes. And lastly, we have the red-bellied woodpecker. A fun fact about these birds is their tongues can actually go two inches past their beaks. And if you want to attract these, they like insects, spiders, nuts, seeds, fruits, and lizards. And they also like nestling birds and minnows, but <laughs> I wouldn't suggest putting dead birds in your bird feeder. So hopefully you guys have got to uh, decorate your bird feeders. We were just gonna go into a quick trivia. So the way we wanted to do the trivia section, do we have people still there? How many do we have? All right, we got six people. So we're doing trivia. So trivia will be done where we're gonna ask a question 
And once we ask the question, we would like you guys at home to go ahead and type in the answer, get your parents to type in the answer, whatever you think the answer is. However close you can get to it, that would be great. And whoever gets the answer first will be given a shout out. Mm -hmm. So the first question is, how many bird species are in the Houston area? Go ahead and guess, just put it out there, and we'll see whoever can get the closest answer. We'll give you guys a few seconds to guess. Anyone have an answer? Are there What's any the answers question? in the chat? How many bird species are in Houston? How many bird species are in the Houston area? In case you guys didn't hear, because they're saying I said it a bit quiet, so I'm sorry for that. Mm -hmm. Please answer in the chat if you can. Just it's a guess. You don't have to get it correct or anything. Don't worry about mm -hmm. googling it or anything. Just guess. We have one guess, but what is the guess? 500. That's actually really, really close. So the mm -hmm. correct answer is 400. There's actually 600 in the Texas area. But in Houston specifically, there is 400, which is really crazy. Stephanie, guessed 500. Stephanie guessed 500. So great job, Stephanie. You were really mm -hmm. close. So our next question is, um, our next question is, which bird is the largest macaw species? I'll give you guys some answer choices. The scarlet. The um, hyacinth. The hyacinth. Sorry. And then the speaks. Uh, don't worry about if you spell it wrong. Yes. Just go for it. Once again, the answer choices are the scarlet bird, or the scarlet macaw, the hyacinth macaw, and the spix macaw. I'll repeat that one more time. The scarlet macaw, the hyacinth macaw, and the spix macaw. Which one do you guys think is the you largest? You can just answer one, two, or three. Okay, Stephanie guessed hyacinth. Wow! Yes, that is correct. Good job, Stephanie. You were correct. That is the hyacinth macaw. Mm -hmm. So, the next question is, what kind of bird do people commonly have as house pets? So, your answer choices are a fish, a dog, a cat, a parrot, or a cockatoo. Now, there are three answer choices there that I would recommend you don't pick. But once again, the answer choices are a fish, a dog, a cat, a parrot, and a cockatoo. Mm -hmm. Do you have any guesses yet? Let's see if anyone but Stephanie or other than Stephanie can get this. Stephanie's on a roll over here. Good job, Stephanie. But let's see. Is anyone going to beat Stephanie to the answer? Once again, the question is, what kind of people do people uh, do? What kind of bird do people commonly have as a house pets? Someone our, guess parrot. Someone guess parrot. I understand that while parrot is a common answer, that's actually not the right answer. It's actually cockatoo. Mm -hmm. I would have guessed parrot. Yeah, I would have guessed parrot too, and that was definitely a trick answer. Whenever we think about movies, we always remember seeing a parrot who can read out loud or something like that, but it's actually not a parrot, it's a cockatoo. Mm -hmm. So our next question is, what is the biggest North American bird? Your answer choices are an eagle, a California condor, a parrot, and a crow. So to repeat the question, the question is, what is the biggest North American bird? An eagle, a California co um, condor, a parrot, or a crow? Okay, so the answer choices for um, the biggest North American bird, once again, are an eagle, a California condor, a parrot, or a crow? Do we have an answer choice? Did we Barrett got it right. Barrett Blackman. Barrett Blackman. Woo! Woo! Congrats. Congratulations. California Condor. The answer is California Condor. Good job, Barrett. Good mm -hmm. job, Stephanie. Someone, huh? People think eagles a lot. Oh, oh, people thought eagle. Mm -hmm. I understand. Actually, eagles are really, really big birds. Yes. But the California condor is shockingly big. It can actually weigh up to 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. And it's the largest North American land bird. I know eagles are a well-known bird, but that is yes. actually not the answer. But definitely a trick answer. Mm -hmm. And it is a pretty big bird, I yeah. must say. But not the answer for this one. So the next question is, what is the biggest... Oh, sorry. Not that one. So a lot of you guys might know what a dodo bird is, right? Here we have a picture of a dodo bird. <laughs> now the dodo bird was actually um, was actually went extinct a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. But one of the dodo's closest relatives is the tooth-billed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just said the answer. I'm so sorry. All right. 
If you guys didn't hear me, what is the closest relative to the dodo bird? <laughs> Your answer choices are a tooth-billed pigeon or a helmeted hornbill. Mm -hmm. So, what is the closest relative to the dodo bird, which is a bird that went extinct? Mm -hmm. The tooth-billed pigeon. <laughs> the the tooth-billed pigeon or the helmeted hornbill? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry guys, I'm struggling to speak apparently, uh -huh. but what is the closest relative to the dodo bird? The tooth-billed pigeon or the helmeted hornbill? Do you have a guess? Beth got it correct. Good job, Beth! Nice that job. the tooth-billed pigeon. Yep, yes. that is the answer. Good job. Alright guys, so now that we are done with our trivia section, we're done with our fun facts, I would like to ask mm -hmm. you guys, who made a bird uh, feeder to go ahead and hashtag hashtag Parallel Youth Crafts up here. We have it written down. Mm -hmm. But again, hashtag Parallel Youth Crafts with your decorated bird house and go ahead and post a picture so we can see what amazing things y'all made. Yes. Um, yeah. And that's so, it. Thank you to everyone who helped thank, out. Yes, thank you to everybody who joined. If you guys came in late, this will be posted later. So you guys can watch through again. And also, we did link the steps in the comments, so if you quickly want to open that up, you guys can. Once again, thank you so much, and have a good day. Bye!